Taiwan has reported the largest Chinese incursion into its air defense identification zone in the past 24 hours. 71 aircraft entered the identification zone. 43 of them even crossed the Taiwan Strait's median line, which is the unofficial buffer between the two sides. Taiwan's defense ministry also detected seven Chinese naval ships near the self-governed island. China has said it conducted what it calls strike drills in response to provocation by the island and the U.S. The United States recently passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows it to provide Taiwan with up to $10 billion in security assistance. China said provisions in the bill cause serious damage to peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. But Beijing has been accused of potentially damaging peace and stability in its own way. A new research paper from the European Union says China aims to use globalization and international trade as a way to extend its political and military power. The paper states that China is doing this chiefly in two ways, dual citizen civilian and military roles for its ships and by dominating international shipping and controlling key ports. First, let's look at the dual role of these ships. This research says there is a growing politicization and militarization of China's civilian maritime sector. This means each Chinese ship is a ship of war. Civilian ships have crews that chiefly consist of military personnel. Ships need to be built to military specifications to allow them to transport troops and tanks. Ferries have to be able to sail the high seas and bring tanks and amphibious craft on land. And roll-on, roll-off ferries have been designed and used for military exercises, including landing operations. Then comes the domination of international shipping. China is now the world's largest shipbuilder. The Chinese state shipbuilding corporation currently builds about 41% of all ships. Beijing controls 18% of all ship container shipments, 12% of crude oil tankers and 13% of liquefied natural gas transports. This means China has the world's largest state-controlled shipping fleet. Then there is Beijing's hold on key ports. The China Ocean Shipping Company holds financial stakes and ports across Europe. This is a company that focuses on strengthening China's Communist Party and has communist uh, commissars on every ship erecting an ideological fortress. Now this research paper clearly states that the world is vulnerable because of its dependence on Chinese shipping. What happens if China tries to capture Taiwan by force? Remember Beijing has never ruled out military action to rein in the island. In the event of an invasion, if the US and the West do intervene, China can choke global trade due to its influence. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has brought about widespread inflation and a cost of living crisis that is wreaking havoc across the world. In particular, it has brought to light Europe's dependence on cheap Russian gas. If China shuts down global trade in the event of a war over Taiwan, how long before Taiwan's allies and nations around the world buckle under the strain? All right, for more on this story, we have with us Ross Darrell Feingold from Taipei. He is a political analyst. Thanks very much, Mr. Feingold, for speaking to Vion. Now, this research paper presents some alarming facts. It says every Chinese ship is a ship of war. And the world is vulnerable because of its dependence on Chinese shipping. Therefore, the question is, what happens if China tries to, let's say, capture Taiwan by force, even if the U.S. and the West do intervene? As we just mentioned in our report, China can choke global trade due to its influence on the seas. What happens then? Yeah, you're, you're correct. And, and there's two parallel issues that you described. One is on the military side and the other is on the economic side. So on the military side, China has developed not just their navy, but the ability to basically militarize uh, civilian shipping assets. And that's going to be extraordinarily helpful in the, in, in, in the event that China decides to launch an invasion or a blockade or some other action that, that is meant to cause Taiwan to capitulate. And the same 
uh, a model of, of civilian and military shipping assets might be used if there is a war, for example, over the Diaoyu ties or what Japan calls the Senkaku Islands that are currently held by Japan, but claimed by China as well as by Taiwan. Uh, so it, it's extremely challenging for the United States, for Japan, uh, of course, for Taiwan and other countries that may come to Taiwan's assistance, such as Australia. And they have to make the necessary investments to keep pace, or not just keep pace, I should say, to exceed China's capabilities. And the other side of that, as you mentioned, is on the economic trade side. So we see some effort by the United States to bring manufacturing back to the U.S., especially in the tech sector. There's been some announcements recently about that, uh, whether that's Intel or more recently TSMC, uh, which had a big ceremony a few weeks ago at its uh, factory that's uh, being constructed in Arizona. But whether that's enough to build the resiliency to resist or avoid Chinese trade pressure remains to be seen. And then we shouldn't forget the actions we see coming from Europe in recent weeks. So we have the German chancellor bringing, bringing a big delegation of business leaders to China. We see France is looking, uh, you know, is talking about President Macron visiting France. And that's going to be about business primarily. And maybe a secondary issue would be Ukraine. Uh, but the point is, a lot of countries still have a very close economic relationship with China. And uh, today, it's just anyone's guess whether or not they'd want to sacrifice the, the uh, stability of their economies for the sake of defending Taiwan. So ultimately, uh, the, the lesson here is that I'm sitting here speaking from Taipei. The people in the government of Taiwan need to take the necessary measures to defend Taiwan if they really want to prevent a Chinese takeover. All right. You know, you're quite right in mentioning that there is a military dimension to this uh, growing Chinese aggression and hegemony and, uh, you know, uh, expansionism that we are witnessing. And then there is the economic dimension which cannot be ignored. We remember Bill Clinton's famous words, it's the economy is stupid. And it does look like economies are now being weaponized. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, for example, has triggered runaway inflation and a massive cost of living crisis, which is wreaking havoc across the world, including in the West. And then there is the crippling energy crisis. So I come back to the uh, you know, point that I made earlier. If China shuts down global trade in the event of a war over Taiwan, for how long do you think Taiwan's allies and other countries will be willing to bear this strain? It's a difficult question to answer for a number of reasons, but primarily, and this is, is where the situation is, is quite distinguished from Ukraine, one of the, the things we can only speculate about, and military experts have very informed opinions about this, but it's still speculation, and that is, how long could Taiwan hold out? So if Taiwan is facing a blockade or an actual uh, assault, whether by land or uh, an amphibious uh, assault or uh, an air assault or a combination of the above, uh, how long could Taiwan last? And would there be a fait accompli where the question you just asked, for example, not just the United States, but Japan, Australia, European countries, uh, how much are they willing to do? Would it be a fait accompli where it's too late? where the question actually, it, it's a moot question because they could sanction China afterwards, but Taiwan might already be in China's hands. So again, the answer to, to that question, it really does start with the willingness of the people in the government here in Taiwan to do enough to show that they could really uh, uh, withstand an initial assault the way Ukraine did, uh, frankly, to the surprise of many people around the world. And, and again, another distinguishing factor is you know, Ukraine could be resupplied uh, by land and by air. And Taiwan, being an island, faces uh, some obvious significant challenges with being resupplied in the event of hostilities. All right. Uh, of course, anybody's guess how this might pan out. But clearly, there is plenty to worry about as far as China's growing aggression uh, is concerned and now on the seas as well. Ross Darrell Feingold, thanks so much for speaking to Vian.